Welcome everyone to today's episode. We will be dipping our toes into genetics just a tiny bit and also discussing horse coat colors since I have noticed that does seem to be a big question. A lot of people don't know what exactly is a coat color, what's the difference between a dun and a buckskin. There's overo, there's pinto, there's all these words tossed around and I just want to kind of bring some understanding to it in this confusion. So how do we identify a coat? Where do we start off on? So first we take away the white markings. So every white marking on the face or any white marking below the knees doesn't count because that belongs to entirely genetic pool and that has no influence on what, what the coat color is. Now, any horse it starts off with one of two base coat colors. It's either red or they can be black. The gene that controls this, of course, is called the extension gene. That's shortened with the letter E. You either have recessive or dominant genes. If you have recessive genes of this extension gene, then it's marked by two little E's, and that makes the horse a chestnut. And how to define a chestnut? They are basically completely red, they do not have any black points, points as in legs, mane, tail, muzzle, ear tips whatsoever. Sometimes they're a bit grayish on the muzzle, but they're not completely black. And they can range in color from um, extremely dark, that's usually called liver chestnut, where they have a darkish uh, red coat to a light copper shade. Now there are two additional variations. There's the chestnut, the flaxen chestnut. Basically the flaxen gene only manipulates or lightens the mane and tail and turns it into a sort of cream colored um, or whitish color. And then there's also the punger, um, or it's also called mealy. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I'll just write the word down so you know how it's spelled. And that also can be used not only on chestnuts, but you can also see it on bay horses. And it lightens everything around the belly, the flanks, the inner legs, the muzzles, and also around the eyes. It also makes it a lighter, creamy color, and I think makes them look really cute. And most common horses are the Hofflinger. They're famous for, for that sort of color, um, but there are also other breeds <laughs> that have this gene. Now, once you have at least one dominant E, then the horse becomes black. And then the black horse is, of course, self-explanatory. They're just completely solid black. So mane and tail and everything is black. They can, of course, have different shades of black. So it's, they can have like a blue tint in it or a red tint. That all depends on genetics, what kind of breed they are, and what kind of food they get. That can influence the shade of black sometimes and how strong the sun is. So now we know what each horse starts off with. Now the third color isn't technically a base coat color since it's a variation of the black. However, it is one of the most common horse colors, so I'm going to mention it here. Now the bay or the bay, the agouti gene is actually a modifier gene and it restricts the black pigments to the horse's points. So the legs, mane, tail, muzzle, and sometimes ear points. Now this means a chestnut horse can actually carry the agouti gene. However, you cannot see it in the chestnut because of course there's no black pigment to disrupt. So you can only see it of course on a black horse, which will turn the black horse bay. So the recessive um, bay gene, the goody gene, has no effect at all. So the horse basically stays black. Now once you add a dominant gene, so a, a large letter A to it, then you get the regular bay. This can also have different shades. It can range from a really blood bay, which is really has a reddish strong tone, to a very dark bay, 
So it can range in color, but genetically, basically, they're all related. The next bay variant is known as the seal bay or seal brown. This horse is almost completely black and is only recognized by its soft brown points. Basically, all the softer parts of the horse have some kind of brown tint. And so that's how you can distinguish them from solid black horses. And the rarest form of bay, I'm not sure if Star Stable has one, but I'll try to find one. And if I have, then I'll definitely show it in the video. If not, I'll just show a picture. It's the wild bay pattern. And it's extremely rare. And they, like normal bays, they also have a black mane and black tail. However, the black points on their legs don't extend over the, the ankle or the pastern of the horse, so the lower part of the leg. So that was it for this video. We covered the three base coats. And stay tuned for future videos where we will be tackling the 16 other <laughs> genetics and colors. All right, have a great day. Bye.